Good morning. Thank you for joining worship with Trinity United Methodist Church on this All Saints Sunday. We are a welcoming community of compassion and faith, and whoever you are and wherever you are on your faith journey, you are welcome among us because you are a beloved child of God. Now is the time for worship, and I invite you to turn in your bulletin to our opening prayer and pray with me. New every morning is your love, great God of light, and all day long you are working for good in the world. Stir up in us desire to serve you, to live peacefully with our neighbors, and to devote each day to your Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ the Lord. Amen. During this time in our service, we'll be remembering the saints and we will name each person from Trinity's ministry who has died since our last observance of all saints. After we've read each name and rung the bell and lit a candle for each one of them, you'll be given an opportunity to come forward from the congregation. There is a basket of votive candles. You can take one and light it from the uh, candle in, in the um, candlestick and uh, for anyone who you would like to remember who has passed and then just place it in the sand. Will you pray with me? Eternal God, hope of all who trust in you, in Jesus Christ you weep with those who mourn, even as you cry out in victory over the grave and raise us from death to life. Today, we remember the saints of light who have gone before us. Donald Mattison Prince. <laughs> Hazel Christian Worley. Irma Elizabeth Ellis. Laquisha Joy McLean. Loretta Barr Stein. Alice Metz Ward.
Bless us, Jesus, good friend of our souls, and sanctify us so that, like the saints before us, we may follow in the way that leads to life, even as we pray the prayer you taught us, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. Good morning. So this morning, Pastor Kelly is going to talk about praying. And, you know, have y'all ever been talking to a friend and not really known what to say? You know, even when we know people really well and we're really good friends, sometimes it can be hard to figure out what we can say to them and what to talk about. And this week I was kind of thinking that prayer is sometimes like that, too. And so I started looking around and trying to figure out, well, what do you do when you don't know? Well, can you put your hands like this for me? Can you put your hands like this for me? And like where you can see all five of your fingers? I found this thing where we can use our five fingers to tell us or to give us who we can pray for. So, you know, when you're looking at your hand, the first thing that's closest to you is your thumb. And so your thumb helps you to remember to pray for your family and those that are close to you. Up next, we got our pointer finger. And, you know, we, we use this to point at things and people, and um, it's supposed to remind you to pray for those who point you in the right direction. So like your teachers, your pastors, your, and all those people. The next finger is your tallest finger, and it is supposed to remind you to pray for those who are leaders. Your fourth finger is your ring finger. Did you know that this is the weakest one of all of your fingers? Let's, we're supposed to use this finger to remember to pray for those who are weak. And then the last one is your ring finger, or your pinky finger, not your ring finger. And it's the smallest one. And it helps us remember that sometimes we might feel small. And when we're praying, it's important that we pray for ourselves too. So we can use that as a fun little way to remember um, who to pray for when we can't think of anything. Would y'all pray with me and then we'll go to Sunday school? All right. Dear Lord, we thank you for prayer. It's good to have a friend to talk to, but even friends sometimes have trouble thinking what to say. Help us remember this five-finger prayer to remember those who need our prayers. Amen. Amen. And now if you'd come with me, we're going to go to the gym and do Sunday school. Our scripture reading today comes from Paul's letter of the Philippians, and I'm reading from chapter 4. Listen for the word of the Lord. Be glad in the Lord always. Again I say, be glad. Let your gentleness show in your treatment of all people. The Lord is near. Don't be anxious about anything. 
Rather, bring up all your requests to God in your prayers and petitions, along with giving thanks. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Good morning, church. Good morning. My name is Kelly Harrison, and I'm the pastor of children and youth here at Trinity United Methodist Church. I'm usually teaching Sunday school to the children at this time, um, but we decided today to switch things up, and I'm going to preach instead. So I'd like to introduce myself a little, since some of you might not know much about me yet. I graduated from Chicago Theological Seminary with my master's degree in May of 2020. Since then, I've preached at various churches doing pulpit supply, which means filling in for a pastor when they are away. I also served as an interim pastor. I love to walk in the forest, which reminds me of where I grew up in rural Indiana. I'm a reader and a video game player. I'm a big fan of the old TV show, Buffy the Vampire Slayer. Lately, I don't watch much TV except for football and volleyball when I can find it. And I also enjoy some of the cooking competitions. I especially like Gordon Ramsay. I love both the indoors and the outdoors. I have pets, one dog and one cat, and will go on about them if you let me. <laughs> I was raised Roman Catholic, but was out of the church for many years, about 20, uh, before joining the United Methodist Church. However, I have practiced being a pastor since elementary school, where I preached my first sermon on a Mr. Microphone and made my sister play taking communion so I could practice giving it to her. We used saltine crackers and water. Before going to seminary, I worked with children as a social worker. Throughout my life, I have been a person who prays. I've tried many different forms of prayer and meditation. Sometimes my prayers feel awkward, but I keep at it. But sometimes it would be nice to have reassurance that prayer makes a difference. Yes, I have seen clearly that prayer makes a difference inside of me. I do change when I pray. But sometimes I want to see that it makes a difference in the world too. Well, for 16 years, there has been a rather unique study at Princeton University. They are testing the power of human intention. They have created a coin flipping machine that can flip 1,200 outcomes per second. As expected, the machine runs close to 50% heads and 50% tails. The probability is equal that you will get heads or tails on any flip. But an interesting thing happens when you include human intention in the mix. If people are asked to pick heads or tails and focus on that result, the odds become more like 75% that the coin would be the side they were focused on. That is a significant change. This study tracks with studies that have been done which include people praying for Washington DC, for example. They encircled the city and meditated uh, for a certain amount of days, and they saw a decrease in violence and crime in the city during that time period. If human intention can bring such drastic results, it is easy to infer that taking these intentions to God is also a powerful thing. Prayer does something, it matters. So I want you to remember this idea that our intentions do manifest and our prayers are answered. I want that hopefulness in the back of your mind as we discuss prayer today. You might have doubt at times, but we're going to suspend our doubt today and live in that space of joyful expectation and even of confidence. For our confidence is not in our own ability to pray or somehow to pray well. Instead, our confidence is in God. Now I want to turn our attention to the window that inspires our theme today, the prayer window. It is on the south side to the worshiper's right at the front of the church. And it's also, uh, there's a picture of it on the back of your bulletin as well. At the top of the window, we see a prayer desk. A prayer desk traditionally has a place for books. This tells us that in prayer, we engage our minds. We are, be we are beings who think and question things, and God can handle our thoughts and questions. God wants us to bring our intelligence and curiosity to the conversation. 
And that is what prayer is, just a conversation with God. Next, we see a harp in the window to the left. The harp is a symbol of praise. Praise is an important part of prayer. It is also a simple form of prayer when you do not know what to say. You can simply say, God, you are wonderful, or God, you are good, and that is a prayer. But returning to the harp, the harp makes music a praise. Our senses, such as hearing, are a part of our prayer. And sometimes with beautiful music, we get emotions and we even get the goosebumps. And we can enjoy those feelings as part of our praise, but we need to remember that emotions and spirituality are not the same thing, and they don't always coincide. Sometimes with prayer, we feel those same kinds of emotions and maybe even get goosebumps. And it can be reassuring or exciting when it happens, but it's okay when we don't experience the emotions too. We praise God in both the highs and the lows and everything in between. Next, we see the praying hands in the center. It is both concrete and symbolic. Yes, we actually do sometimes put our hands in that position to pray, and it is also symbolic of the fact that our bodies can be part of our prayers. There are many ways to bring your body into prayer. You can bow your head or dance to music. Prayer is diverse. To the right, we see our last symbol in the window, the censer with incense in it. Again, we see that we engage our senses in prayer. This time we engage smell and also sight as we watch the incense rise up. Our prayers rise up with the incense. What we can learn from these sections of the window is that prayer is for the whole being, body, mind, and spirit. We can bring all of who we are to God in fact, that's what God wants. God wants us to bring our authentic self into relationship with God. Now, depending on who you ask, there are several different ways to categorize types of prayer. Rather than naming and defining them all, I want to share with you the groups they fall into, which I think is a little bit more helpful. And those are things you say to God about God, like praise and worship. Things you ask for for yourself, including asking for forgiveness. And things you ask for for the world or other people. Prayer can also be divided up into public and private prayer. And it can be read, memorized, or spontaneous. These are all sorts of suggest there are all sorts of suggested formulas that people utilize to make sure they're saying the right types of prayers. Many of them help to construct some beautiful prayers. But here's the thing, there is no right way to pray. Whatever works for you, works for you. And as I mentioned earlier, prayer is diverse. Any way that someone reaches out to God, it is pleasing to God, who always has and always will reach out to us, to us first. That is the magnificent thing. God is always wanting to hear from us in the good, the bad, and the ugly of it all reaching out to us in the midst of life, which is messy and complicated. But we have this great gift that we can bring it all to God. Turning to today's scripture, I'm struck by something. I have always heard the part that says, don't be anxious about anything. Rather, bring up all of your requests to God in your prayers and petitions, along with giving thanks. This is great advice, but before we get to that part, we are reassured that God is near. That is why we can have confidence about our requests and can be non-anxious. With God near us, we can have confidence. Again, our confidence is in God. In the end, when I think of prayer, I think of the people I have met while performing pastoral care as both a lay leader and as a pastor. Pastoral care includes listening to others talk about their spiritual life or their struggles and providing a pastoral response and a safe place to talk about spirituality. The majority, if not all, of the people I have talked to have felt some level of dissatisfaction about their prayer lives. Perhaps they thought they lacked the right formula. Perhaps they questioned if anyone was listening. Perhaps they wondered why they felt dry emotions when they prayed. Whatever the reason, they felt something was lacking. But I want to ask you today to look at dissatisfaction in one's prayer life, not as a problem, but as an opportunity for growth. 
you can accept yourself as you are and your prayers as adequate and still learn and grow in your prayer prowess. I ask you to basically extend yourself grace and keep going no matter what. Last week in Sunday school, we talked about the itsy bitsy spider and the meaning of the word determination. That is what we must have in our prayer life, determination. And when the rain comes and washes us out, we try again. Lastly, I want to mention that today we are celebrating All Saints Day. It reminds us of the community we have with the great cloud of witnesses. We give thanks for those who have gone before us. We think of inspirational people who shore up our faith. And we light candles in remembrance of those we have lost. We know we are united to our spiritual ancestors by the miraculous thing that is community and through prayer, which unites. We know that the traditions of the church are handed down from generation to generation. And in our grief at the loss of our loved ones, we find hope for a blessed reunion someday. Will you pray with me? Lord God, who is always near and always reaching out to us, open our hearts and guide our minds so that we might feel the freedom of authentic communication with you. Amen. as this is the last day of October and actually Halloween. Our church has been selling pumpkins all month long and I wanted to give you an update. They were all sold before Halloween. Yesterday they were sold out. I wanna give thanks to everyone who helped unload and sell and also buy pumpkins we were able to generate over $30,000 in sales total, and we get to keep 40% uh, of that for uh, mission and ministry that goes beyond Trinity Church to the charities that we support. And I just give thanks for how we've been able to come together, even in the midst of a pandemic, and make a difference to help make the world a better place. 
One of the things that we do every year is uh, an annual stewardship campaign as we anticipate how all of us are called to share from the gifts that God has given us to support the ministry of Trinity Church in the coming year. It's our annual stewardship campaign. And our theme this year is faithful generosity, strength for today and hope for tomorrow. It culminates next Sunday, November 7th, with Consecration Sunday. It's a time we ask people to make an estimate of their giving for the coming year. We hope everyone will make every effort to be present on this special worship service. Our preacher for the day will be Reverend Kelly Knight, who is the pastor of Holy Covenant United Methodist Church on Diversity Street in Chicago. Uh, we are asking people to let us know uh, your plans to attend, yes if you are, or no if you aren't, and you can make reservations online at trinitywillmet.com slash stewardship. There's a link there for RSVP. Each week we have been hearing from different members of our congregation on various stewardship themes, and I'd like to introduce Tom Heider, who will share a stewardship reflection today. Thank you, Pastor Brian. Good morning, church. Good morning. I'm Tom Heider, and I'm here to relate some of my thoughts about financial support for Trinity Church with respect to our annual stewardship campaign. My wife, Kathy, and I have been members of Trinity for over 29 years. Four of our children have been baptized here, and two have been married here. All six of our children have attended Sunday school at Trinity and were confirmed in the faith at this church. Two of our grandchildren have been baptized at Trinity with one more Excellent. baptism to occur before the end of the year, we hope. Uh, suffice it to say that Trinity is our church home. Over the years, like many of you, Kathy and I have volunteered for a variety of roles at Trinity. We've taught Sunday school, served on various committees, sold pumpkins, worked in the food pantry, and done various other tasks as needs have arisen. We also understand that providing financial support to the church is vital. We view it as fulfilling part of God's plan for us. Scripture teaches us that everything we have is a gift from God, and we should strive to share it generously. Committing to an annual financial contribution helps the church plan activities, programs, music, and mission work. There's a lot that goes on behind the scenes here at Trinity just to keep it clean, safe, operational, and available for our spiritual fulfillment, Christian education, and faith outreach. We also feel that funding mission work in our own neighborhoods and around the world is an important component of our faith journey. As we approach Consecration Sunday next week, let's keep in mind God's abundant generosity to us. Let's think of how great it is to share these gifts for the benefit of others especially those less, less fortunate than us. We have been chosen by God and have been endowed with great gifts. Let's fulfill God's plan and generously share our financial gifts for the good work that Trinity is doing in the world. Thank you. Thank you, Tom, for really telling your story of how Trinity has made a big difference in your family's life and how it continues to make a difference in our community and in the world. Thank you all for your financial support to Trinity over the years, and especially during this pandemic. It's been so encouraging to us to be able to still be the church in these important times when people need hope and they need care and love and support. And the mission of the church fits that perfectly. As we dedicate ourselves to love and serve Christ, Will you pray with me? O oh, gracious God, everything we have comes from you. So accept the gifts that we offer and, and actually help us make our entire life an offering to you. With grateful hearts, we consecrate ourselves and our coming days to your service through Jesus Christ our Lord. And the church said, Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you. We arise and share Christ's peace with each other as we prepare for our hymn. Peace be with you. Peace be with you.
and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit with all the communion of the saints of light be with us always. Amen.